Welcome back to Sapoti Saporium. How's it growing? We're here in our backyard in Sydney and a lot of people would think Sydney is a temperate climate and you can't grow tropical trees and tropical fruit. Well, let's have a look and see what we've got here. So guys, the first tree that we're gonna look at in the garden here is the black sapote. So we've planted quite a lot of these tropical trees over the last three or four years. So when we're sort of touring around the garden here, not everything has been established for very long. So a lot of it's really an experiment. The tree that's been most successful and has just been really abundant and grown really, really well is the black sapote. So this is why we called it sapote saporium because it's a tropical fruit. And this is the black sapote here. So this tree, we keep cutting the top off the tree to keep it manageable. We don't want a giant big tree. It's got about a hundred fruits on it. And the interesting thing about the black sapote in the Sydney climate is that the fruit ripens uh, towards the end of summer. And then once the temperature drops to a certain uh, level and it gets too cold, it goes into a hibernation but the fruit are actually still on the tree. So the fruit have been sitting on this tree all of winter and now it's the start of spring, they're starting to come back to life and there's a little bit of new growth on the tree which tells us that those fruits are about to be ripe. The black sapote is an amazing fruit because it looks green and when we cut into it, it's quite white and hard like a hard unripe apple. But if, we, if it's mature and we take it off the tree, and leave it on the kitchen bench for a couple of days, it'll turn into a beautiful, luscious, chocolate sort of um, ebony color uh, fruit inside. And it has just a, a beautiful, mild, uh, lovely sort of velvety, chocolatey flavor, especially if you mix it with banana and coconut, you really get that chocolate mousse effect. So it's an incredible tree, an incredible fruit, which we love eating, especially on breakfast cereals in the morning. So. This tree, of all the tropical trees that we've got growing in this sort of slash temperate slash subtropical climate, this is by far um, the most abundant and successful tree. So much so that we took this tree and um, I've taken the seeds from the tree and created a hedge out the front where I'm actually uh, pruning the tree to keep it very small and not allowing them to grow into trees. And I've planted a succession of about eight or nine trees together to keep a hedge. So we thought, why not have an edible hedge out of black sapote? So this is an amazing tree and we recommend growing it. As long as you don't have a frost, this tree will probably grow in your area. So um, yeah, a, a wonderful tropical tree, which very few people really grow. All right. So the next plant that we're gonna talk about here is Another plant that hasn't actually produced fruit yet, but it definitely will. And it's a really beautiful decorative plant. As a matter of fact, we wish we bought more and use them as a feature plant. So this thing is gonna produce bananas uh, for us. So that's gonna be absolutely amazing. So that's a dwarf Cavendish banana. We've actually got three different bananas growing on the property. We've got this Cavendish, which is your bog standard banana, which is sort of, you know, your, your average banana, the most uh, cultivated banana in the world and probably the most tasteless of all bananas. But if we uh, can vine ripen this, if we can ripen these bananas to their maturity and don't pick them too early, it'll be beautiful. Like anything that you grow yourself, uh, any of this fruit that we grow ourselves is far superior to anything you could ever find in a supermarket because we're not taking it off the tree and forcing it to ripen by gassing it and, and putting it through all these processes. We just let it ripen naturally. So that's the Dwarf Cavendish banana. Um, not that easy to find, but uh, if you do, I reckon it's, a, it's a, a great one to grow. And I'll just move the stool back a bit here. Fraser, you can follow the camera around onto me here. Can you see that plant there? This is an interesting one. This is a um, yellow sapote or canistel. So this is a really good example of a plant that uh, is getting hardened to our conditions. I'm not sure whether this plant will grow really well in this, this climate. And having said that, 
this has been here for four years. So about a winter ago, it got really sick at the end of winter and it really didn't like the cold conditions. This year has been a much more uh, mild winter and the thing is flourishing. It hasn't produced any fruit yet, uh, but that's one of the exciting things about growing your own tropical fruit because you just never know when the thing's going to produce fruit um, and maybe this will be the year that it does. It's still quite small, but it could support fruit, I think. Uh, slow growing and the fruit of this um, is the size of a big avocado. It's yellowy orangey flesh and yellowy orangey skin. And it's the same texture maybe as an avocado, but think of it more like a boiled egg. So sometimes it's called the boiled egg fruit uh, and it's a sweet, uh, chalky, beautiful flavour for the uh, canistel or the yellow sapote. A lot of these plants are called sapotes and it's almost a generic name uh, meaning sweet fruit. If we come along a little bit, this is our next plant in this row. This is called a relinia. This is an amazing uh, fruit. We just went to the Dane tree a few months ago. One of my friends tried this for the first time and said instantly this is his favourite fruit. This is that whole custard apple family, but you haven't tried uh, a custard apple unless you've had this. This is Relinia. This is called the Brazilian custard apple. It actually gets yellow on the tree. And one of the reasons you'll never find this in a fruit market uh, other, other than in the tropics is because it can't transport. As soon as it's picked or it's touched, it gets bruised really easily and you get these really black bruisings, but it's got a really knobbly skin and it's a luscious um, lemon meringue pie with a sort of a sweet velvety white flesh with black seeds. So this, this tree dropped its leaves the last couple of winters, but this year it's kept its leaves. So I'm saying that it's getting harder to our climate. It's produced lots of little flowers over the last couple of years, uh, but so far no fruit. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that this uh, beautiful tree is going to produce fruit. It grows really abundantly. It grows quite fast. It's one of those sort of soft wood, fast growing trees that uh, doesn't live a terribly long time. So we're hoping we'll get some fantastic fruit from it. And Fraser, could you put the camera just onto this plant here? <laughs> oh, there goes the seat. There goes the seat. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea buying that from Coco Republic 10 years ago, but she's all over. <laughs> yeah, it's got fungus eating into it. Well. Okay, my back okay. Killing me. okay, we'll just continue. F film this bit. Film this bit. I'll have to crouch down. So, <laughs> sorry about that uh, mishap. So, this, this next... Um, <laughs> this next plant here is not a tropical fruit, but it's a very tropical plant. This is a Heliconia rostrata. This is probably the thing I'm almost the most excited about for anything. This is the hanging lobster claw Heliconia. And of course it's springtime and we're just seeing some little shoots starting to come out now, but this produced, I think about 10 hanging bracts of flowers uh, or inflorescence last summer and it stayed on the tree on the on the the plant for three months amazing the most tropical looking thing you could ever imagine in the tropics and it will grow in sydney it outgrows a lot of other heliconias we've had a lot of heliconias we've tried and most of them die in the cold but this one loves it it looks a bit ratty at the moment so use your imagination we'll throw up a photo to show what it really looks like but it, it is absolutely amazing One of the other plants that's been really successful in the garden is this guava here. This is a um, Hawaiian pink guava. It's only been growing for a couple of years and it's produced um, quite a few fruit considering that it's in shade. So we don't have the um, luxury of being able to have everything 
out in a beautiful sort of sunny hill to get full sun, which most fruit plants, fruit trees would really like. So that doesn't matter. We've got things growing where we can. And the uh, pink Hawaiian guava, a really hardy plant. And who doesn't love a bit of uh, that beautiful guava? And once again, because you're uh, growing it yourself. It's not some green hard thing that you're buying from the fruit market. This thing you can ripen it on the tree until it's about to fall off. You take it off and you can eat it and it's got that beautiful pink flesh and that really fragrant uh, guava smell to it. So it's absolutely delicious. Well this next fruit is amazing. This is probably pound for pound the best fruit I think you can grow. Once again I apologize because there's nothing worse than somebody showing a a video on you know their plants and their fruits and things with immature trees and, and not being able to show you an example but trust me this white sapote is one of the best fruits that you'll ever eat it's luscious it's it's just a beautiful creamy sweet tropical fruit and it grows really well it's a really um, hardy fast growing tree and let's have a look at it bring the camera around a little bit here okay this is it all right so it's got these big leaves Gorgeous tree, right? Beautiful, beautiful tree. And uh, because it's in the shade here, this tree uh, decided to bolt on me. So it grew as like this really long, tall stick. And I, in the end, it was just whipping around like a flag pond. I had to cut it off to encourage it to sort of sprout out and grow properly. So it's sort of been set back a couple of years and um, we expect to see some flowers on this not, in the not too distant future. But um, this, this is one of those tropical fruits along with the black sapote. The white sapote, really beautiful fruit, like a proper tropical tasting fruit, but it grows really well uh, in this sort of temperate climate. So uh, another fruit that I encourage people to grow, it's a really, really good fruit. Okay guys, I know I've said this before, this is my favorite plant, but this, is really really exciting to me this is uh this plant behind me is called the mamay sapoti or mammy sapoti it it looks the texture of the fruit looks like a cantaloupe on the outside and about the same size but football shaped when you cut into it it's got this incredible um red orange flesh it's this beautiful, um, really densely nutrient, nutrient dense, really heavy dense uh, fruit. So like one Mammy Sapoti fruit will be more than enough, half of that will be more than enough to feed you for a day. Uh, it's an incredible fruit, uh, you know, it comes from sort of Central America. And we have a tree here that's about three years old and it's going crazy. It's, it's growing really well. Look at that. I mean, who would think that here in Sydney, something that's so associated with being a tropical tree will be growing so well. So it's, it's, it's incredible to me that it's doing so well. Yeah, so here it is behind me and you get a scale of it. I'm, I'm standing up on a boardwalk here about a foot off the ground. This thing is, this thing is about nine or 10 feet tall and it's in about its third or fourth growing season. So I believe that it can take, you know, 10 or 12 years to, for it to produce fruit. And, uh, but that doesn't stop us looking at it every day, hoping we see a flower, but it's growing really well. So the Mammy Sapoti, what an amazing, amazing fruit this, this thing is. So I'm actually a little bit um, uh, disappointed that we didn't grow more of it. We've got another tropical tree here, which is uh, quite unique. This is a mango tree and uh, we know mangoes grow really well because on either side of us here we've got mango trees. In a uh, temperate climate like Sydney, um, I'm going to call it a subtropical slash temperate climate because we're close to the ocean with no frosts. These mango trees tend to flower and produce mangoes every second year or every year. If they miss a year then they produce a very abundant crop the following year. We've got Kensington Pride mangoes on either side of us. And the mango that I've got growing here is called a Nam Doc Mai. So that's one of the thin uh, Thai varieties of mango. And it's growing really slowly. Um, funnily enough, you know, in its first year or two, it kept producing these massive flower spikes. It put all its energy into this huge flower spikes and it wanted to grow this silly little um, 
mango that subsequently fell off. So it was a bit frustrating because all we want this mango to do is actually grow as a tree. It's nowhere near ready to produce mangoes. I'll tell you what, what we are growing, which I think is growing really well. Uh, much like the Mammy Sapoti, probably a real surprise is the jackfruit. So the jackfruit seems to grow really well in Sydney. Now, I'm sure there are people growing jackfruit in Sydney. I'm yet to see one, but I'm sure there's somebody growing them. I've heard sort of rumors of people who've grown them, um, but imagine that. So in, in our uh, situation here, I've grown uh, two jackfruit trees right next to our deck. And the idea is that we're gonna grow the jackfruit up and create that canopy over the top of um, a deck area that, so you have a natural canopy of foliage over the top of your head um, with jackfruit hanging down. So for those who are new to jackfruit, it's just an amazing fruit. It's the biggest fruit in the world. They can grow, you know, to, I don't know, in, in extreme cases, 50, 60 kilos per fruit. And, uh, but typically, you know, maybe four or five kilos. And when we cut that uh, fruit open, it has these beautiful, sweet um, uh, sections inside it surround, with a seed inside that. So uh, jackfruit was the, um, the impetus or the inspiration for juicy fruit chewing gum. So if you're familiar with the old juicy fruit, that's what jackfruit tastes like. It's a very fruity, um, succulent, uh, beautiful, beautiful flavor and very addictive. So we just can't wait for the day when we have jackfruit hanging at head high uh, in our tropical garden here in Sydney and being able to pick them ourselves. And like with any fruit, when you grow it yourself, it's far superior to anything that you can get from the market. Unless, of course, you're buying it from somewhere like Rusty's Market up in Cairns, where it's local growers that are bringing their, their vine ripened fruit, if you like, to the market. So jackfruit, that's another one we're very, very excited about. Um, look, we might have to wait a few years for them to, to um, mature and produce fruit, but I'm quite sure they will. And one of the little secrets with that is that we've planted two jackfruits two jackfruit trees next to each other. And in future, if I were to do the garden again, what I would do is I'd always plant two trees of these marginal types trees. I'd, I'd plant two of them together because typically one grows better than the other. And if you do get two, and if you run out of room, you can always take one down. But um, the other thing is they can also help with cross pollinizing each other. So that's another th idea to plant two together if you possibly can. Now, of course, there's a hell of a wind blowing. I don't know where this has come from, but <laughs> always the way when you try to film, uh, not a cloud in the sky and a howling wind. So I've retreated into a back corner of the garden and um, the garden itself, I thought I'd explain, is we've uh, started growing these palm trees and black bean trees here when we first uh, arrived on this block. So we've got mature black bean trees, which you find actually in the rainforest up as far as the Dane tree and further south. Uh, a very tropical tree indeed, uh, but grows absolutely beautifully here with absolutely no sign of any trouble whatsoever. And we have mature palm trees as well, and they are all bang palms, which are a combination of the Bangalow palm and the Alexander palm, both Australian palm trees, and they're growing really well. And what these palm trees and the black bean trees have done is they've created a upper canopy for us. So we've got them on the south side of our property so that light comes in from the north. So anybody watching in the northern hemisphere, it's the opposite. So in other words, we've got them on, on sort of creating a canopy, but still allowing sunlight to stream in uh, to the sub canopy, uh, to where all these other fruit trees and all these other trees and, and plants are growing. Okay, so this is really an extensive garden tour. So uh, I hope you find it interesting. I'll show you, I'll talk about some of the sub, the understory plants that we've got or the lower level plants. So as I was saying in a rainforest scenario, we have our different layers. So we've got our upper canopy, which we've got now, 
We've got a mid canopy, which is a lot of the fruit trees that I'm showing you at the moment. Some of those will turn into our upper canopy as they grow along. And then we've got uh, species that are growing down at ground level. So we've got some interesting things here uh, that help create a tropical vibe. We've got things like our pond out the back here. Got some lilies growing in the pond. And we also have gingers. So the gingers are really another thing that grow really well here. Uh, there's different types of gingers. These gingers are in the Costa family, so um, the Costas uh, family, so Costas barbaris is one, and then there's all different variations that breeders have come up with. So this creates that beautiful red um, cone, and it grows really well in Sydney. It's not the torch ginger, the torch ginger doesn't really grow here. Um, and it's not the shampoo ginger, the low level one that grows at the ground. We do have one growing, it's growing really well, but it hasn't produced any of those low level um, um, uh, flowers at this stage. Okay, this sun is really intense. So it's, I'm trying to hide behind a palm tree here so that I'm not completely overexposed. Um, one of the other things that we've got growing here uh, at ground level is we've got some crotons and we also have some bromeliads. So the bromeliads help us create that understory effect. Um, like with a lot of gardens, we're sort of going through a bit of a transition phase. We've done a lot of hard landscaping over winter and we're replanting a lot of things. And the idea with a tropical garden, for uh, anybody who's interested in starting a tropical garden, is you plant things really densely. It's all about getting that dense planting. You can always take things out later, but plant them densely because a tropical forest, a tropical rainforest, which you're trying to be influenced by and be inspired by, it has a lot of diversity in species growing within it. So you might have a big open lawn area, but also have a lot of tropical species like, you know, on the verges and surrounding it, really growing tightly and closely together. The other part of our garden design that we've done here is to have the odd tree that grows out of the middle of the sort of open area in the middle of the lawn to create that sort of tropical effect. You know, when you go to a nice um, uh, resort somewhere in the tropics, there's usually like a frangipani or a coconut or something growing right out of the middle of the lawn. Uh, and that's just an effect that we sort of are inspired by. And uh, we just love that with the grass growing right up around its trunk. That's the end of the tour, guys. Well, at least that's the end of part one. I think that um, we covered most of the plants in the garden, but I realized we've got other sections of the garden that I didn't show you, so we're gonna have to do a part two. So subscribe to be sure to get notified of that and give us a thumbs up if you like the video and share it with your friends, because it's really just about getting information out there so that people can enjoy gardening and grow these amazing tropical fruits in areas where you don't think that maybe you could. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.